Hello, friends, viewers, porcupines, libertarians, and fellow travelers. Welcome back to Porcupine Real Estate's series on Meet the Regions, where we help you learn all about New Hampshire, some of the hidden spots, uh, great places to live and do business. And uh, today, we're super excited to have Mel Gibson, who's our buyer's agent and residential specialist at Porcupine Real Estate, who lives in the Monadnock region. Um, Mel, great to see you. Welcome back. And uh, please share with the viewers a little bit about your story and uh, where, why you like uh, living where you do. Okay. Hello. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, I love talking about my region. Um, Monadnock is uh, a big region on, you know, the um, southwest part of the state. And um, we moved here about 12 years ago from uh, Michigan, and we used Porcupine Real Estate, um, and we settled in the Mananac region. And then nine years after that, um, we wanted to move, but we wanted to stay in the region. We really loved it here. So we moved um, literally five minutes away, and uh, we've been loving it here ever since. Here in the screen that we're sharing, it's a, a map of the state. People can see, yeah, it's the southwest corner of New Hampshire. What are some of the uh, larger towns or cities in the region that people might be familiar with? Keen is probably the biggest one that most people will know. It's the most largely populated, and it does have a Keene um, State College there as well. But um, Jaffrey and Peterborough are also... Uh, pretty well known in the state as well. Well, in the early days of Free State Project, Keene was a bit of an epicenter for activism with early movers, largely because Free Talk Live based themselves in the city of Keene when they first moved to the state. So a lot of people who listened to that show, and including myself for years, uh, heard a lot about Keene, even though nowadays, you know, there are probably two or three dozen of our friends that live there, but you know, porcupines are pretty well spread out across. Yeah, um, Free Talk across Live is why we moved. Yeah. Oh, is that you? You you and Richard listen to it as well, huh? Yeah. We talked about some of the re recreation and social things. I know there are weekly meetups in Keene and other parts of, of the state for new movers to quickly get to speed and f find friends and feel that sense of community that's so important about New Hampshire. Um, on this side, side, we're talking a little bit about recreation. I mean, that's one of the best things about the region. Tell us uh, what your experience is and with the clients that you've served, you know, what they love about that. Oh my gosh. Well, you can't talk about the Monadnock region without talking about, you know, uh, Monadnock State Park and, and hikes up Mount Monadnock. And it's actually um, the most hiked mountain in North America with about 125,000 people per year coming just to hike it. So, and the views up there are really beautiful. And if that's not for you, um, a little bit down the road is Miller State Park where we have Pack Monadnock. And uh, you can actually drive up it with your car and get out and look mm -hmm. at these there. So if you're not a hiker, you can still get those views. Yeah, hiking up Mount Monadnock is a lot of fun. There are a number of different trailheads, so some takes a little longer, some takes shorter time. Um, Robert and I hiked it up. I think we made it in just over an hour up and about 45 minutes down. I heard but there it, was some competition. There was some competition. I don't think I could keep up with him anymore. I was uh, back when I was younger and better shape. But at the top of the mountain, on a clear day, you can see all the way to Boston. It's a uh, it's, bald granite at the top here above tree line, 360 degree views. It really is a great way to spend a day. Yeah, even and, just driving through the Monadnock region, you can always tell where you're at driving because Monadnock is just right there. Um, so pretty to even drive by. <laughs> One of the other fun topics people are always asking about once they move here is, hey, where do you go to eat? What's, what's fun? What, what are some of the night spots? Uh, you having lived there so long, what are some of your favorite places? 
Oh my goodness. Well, I have to mention that um, every Sunday in Keene, uh, they have a meetup um, at Yasso Jamaican right now. Um, sometimes it does move around, but it's been there for a while. Um, and then my personal favorite, my husband and I, every month for about nine years, uh, we go to a little place called Pickety Place in Mason. And every month they change the menu. Uh, so it's always new and always fresh. Um, but you have to get a reservation because they book up. Um, and then they have their own, don't they have their own place. greenhouses on site? So everything is super fresh, the herbs and the vegetables. The it's amazing. Yes, it's gorgeous. They have a little shop where you can buy the herbs there too. It's really cute. Yeah. And then uh, another place that I really love is in Peterborough, and that is called the Bantam Grill. And they just have amazingly fresh, good food. So really, really fun to be there. When I'm out Keenway, often what I like to do after uh, lunch or dinner is head up to the little town of Walpole. And they have this so, somehow famous chocolate shop. It's called Burdex. <laughs> and they're famous for their chocolate turtles. And so uh -huh. that's worth a drive also. The western half of New Hampshire is along the uh, Connecticut River. And uh, Walpole is one of those towns. So it's a beautiful drive from Winchester through Chesterfield through Westmoreland, up along the river, up to Walpole, Langdon area. So we encourage people when they're out this way to just you know, drive the region. You're really going to enjoy it. Absolutely. Are, you mentioned uh, hiking. I think there's a, is there is there any skiing, snow skiing out that way? Yes, Crotchet Mountain is pretty close by and um, it's a great ski resort. And it's really, uh, it's got something for everybody. Um, and if you're new, they're really great um, to help you. I hadn't skied in over 20 years. And then I went there and they were fantastic with getting me on my skis again and getting me down the mountains. And I got to tell you, uh, skiing in New Hampshire is way different than skiing in Michigan. Like oh. the big hills there are just bunny hills here. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> I'm going to share a screen. Maybe we'll shift gears a little bit. Talk about taxes and politics. Uh, both can be hated, but of course, I've been very involved in politics over the years, having run and been elected to the state house uh, a number of times. And you have some great state representatives out in the Monadnock region in towns like. Ringe, New Ipswich, including fellow free staters, uh, very liberty, people who score very high on the liberty scale, members of the House Freedom Caucus. Um, so I know some lucky. of the, yes. what's that? We're pretty lucky, but we still have to keep fighting that fight. Uh, yeah, we. <laughs> you're right. It's always an uphill battle. Now, some of the towns out there are known to be very liberal. So if our clients are thinking about moving to the Monadnock region, they're always going to ask Mel, or myself, hey, which town should we avoid if we're not going to, if we're worried about the local politics? Uh, I would say for political reasons only, you might want to avoid Peterborough and Keene. <laughs> Those two towns tend to be a little bit lefty, left of center, uh, sort of Democrat um, right. dominated, yes. Whereas other towns are very conservative. Uh, New Ipswich, for sure. Uh, New Ipswich has a very high. Uh, per percentage of the population that attends church. Mm -hmm. Jaffrey is the ten next town over. That's a good one. Wilton, where you live, is pretty good. Richmond. Back in the day, the small town of Richmond had the highest number of votes for Ron Paul <laughs> in a presidential oh, primary of, of any state, of any, I'm sorry, of any um, town in New Hampshire. So that's its one of its claims to fame. And then North of, of Keene, you have some really nice uh, rural towns, such as Alstead. You know, I have several friends in Alstead, and they keep their taxes low there, and they just, you know, let people do their own thing, leave them alone. They have a very light touch with, with politics in that town, so we highly recommend that one. Absolutely, yes. You got to stay vigilant. For people who are just starting to look at the real estate in New Hampshire, know that property taxes vary widely from town to town. I think you were saying, Mel, that um, overall, is, a, is that area 
pretty is it sort of on the lower end of property taxes? Yes, overall Monadnock is pretty low compared to some of the other regions, of course, except for Coas County um, and the upper region um, where not a lot of people live. But yeah, it's pretty nice except for, you know, you've got the high ones such as, again, Keene and, and um, Hinsdale are, are pretty high, but um, depending on where you're looking, you can get a pretty good rate. Okay. Taxes. And a, a professional agent specialist like Mel can help you determine which of those towns really to focus in on. Now, uh, property taxes are high, but of course, two thirds to three quarters of the annual property tax bill for a homeowner or a property owner in New Hampshire uh, goes to the schools, to the government schools. But there are tons of options for families in New Hampshire thanks to a lot of good work legislatively over the years and to sort of a tradition of liberty here. What's your experience, Mel, and what people uh, are looking for and what are some of the different options out there? Oh my gosh. Well, a lot of my clients are looking for like all kinds of different things for their kids. Some went to homeschool, some went, you know, Christian schools, some want uh, just a really nice, good public school. Um, with my children, um, they, it was always their decision on what they wanted to do. And so for um, my daughter's schooling, she chose public school. Um, and then my son uh, did a little bit of public school, but now he's doing something really neat. It's, um, it's an online charter school um, specifically catered to online education. So um, he is self-directed most of the time and uh, he can go at any pace that he wants. And that's really really nice. If we find that that works best for us. Um, but there's lots of, uh, there's another charter school in, I do believe it was Dublin. Um, and uh, we've got some Montessori schools um, in the region as well. So take your pick. We've, we can find you a house near those schools. I love, I love that. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's also Waldorf school in Wilton for both middle school and high school. There's a new charter school. Charter school here in New Hampshire is, it's free it, to students. It's considered a public school, but often they have a waiting list to get in. And yeah. so it's not dictated by your zip code, but rather you have to apply specifically to that. And there's one called Lionheart Academy, and they have a, a beautiful mission over there to teach a classical education. So there really are a ton of great opportunities for families here. Look at the next slide. We're talking about jobs and industry. I know there's a record low unemployment level in New Hampshire compared to other states, but I guess it's even lower where you are. Absolutely. Well, like right now, as of August, um, in New Hampshire, it's 1.8 unemployment. Like that's it. I could not believe it was so low. So people are just wanting, you know, people to come in and apply for jobs because they just can't fill the positions fast enough. So that's good news for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just need if to you're, you if you're coming from a big state like Michigan or Nevada, where I hail from, you'll find out that New Hampshire is relatively small geographically. You can get east across east to west in about two hours, north to south in about three hours. So some people um, don't mind commuting 35, 45, 50 minutes for a good job. So in, in, because it is a small state, you can live in a rural area or a suburb down in the Monadnock region, but still go into the city for a daily work commute and only have a 45 minute commute. Absolutely. And not only is it only 45 minutes, I know you might be thinking, oh, that's a long time if you're in the city. It's not a long time when you're driving on a beautiful scenic road. Like I find that things are just, they might be a little further and take more time, but I'm much calmer getting there. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> There are a number of manufacturing jobs in New Hampshire, in, out in your region. Um, and for some reason, whenever I see people post on Facebook or elsewhere asking for jobs about a machinist, I think of three places. One, the two gun manufacturers, which are Sig Sauer out on the seacoast. Um, what's, what's the other one? Ruger. Thank you, Ruger up in Newport. And then, of course, uh, Hitchner. And you, somebody very close to you, works at Hitchner. Mach is it Hitchner Machining? Is that the name? Yes, manufacturing. manufacturing. Hitchner Manufacturing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's right here in Wilton. Okay. And you can work um, any shift you want, and they're always hiring. Always hiring. So if if any of you viewers 
is looking for a machinist job, contact Mel and Melanie will get you, uh, you know, I'll get you in. She'll get a, she'll get a, um, a free ice cream I have a connection. or something by referring somebody. She has connections. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, that's... we're going to bring up the next slide, resources oh. and tips. Uh, what we try to do really, uh, as seen in this video, is be a resource for people considering moving to New Hampshire. We try to be a um, clearinghouse of good information. We may not know all the answers, but we're well networked and can find out the answers for you. One of the resources we provide at Porcupine Real Estate is a separate website called nhrelocationguide.com. And it'll have a, a links to a lot of information that we've discussed today, such as property tax rates by town, um, a list of, you can also search for real estate there, a list of ticks and tips and tricks on finding a moving company, how to uh, search for a home, how to find financing, things a lot of frequently asked, asked questions about education, jobs, travel, things like that, politics. We're not afraid to talk about politics at our <laughs> real estate agency. You and I have handled all the questions, so we can take care of that. <clears throat> yep, I think that's good. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, we're willing to help with any questions or concerns you have. I mean, Mark moved a long time ago from out of state. I moved with two kids and a dog, you know, from out of <laughs> state. So it's not impossible to move a family. Um, it takes a little finesse, but um, once you get here, you're going to fit right in and, and it's going to be so much better. Your life is going to be so much better. Yeah. And we're here to help you. We're here to consider us a resource for moving to New Hampshire. You can visit us online at porcupinerealestate.com. And also on Facebook, we're very active on Facebook. Check out our page there, Porcupine Real Estate, and uh, post your questions. Melanie, if people like to contact you directly, why don't you give us your email so people can contact you to learn more about properties in the Monadnock region. Sure, absolutely. It's mel at porcupinerealestate.com. And Mel Gibson, that, that you're sort of famous, I guess, in these, these parts for a number yes, of reasons. Everybody knows me. <laughs> well, thank you for your time today, Mel. This has been great, a great conversation. Thank you viewers. And uh, look forward to seeing you all in the future here in the free state. Absolutely. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.